Okay, these are our guided notes for 5-3 proving triangle congruence. Uh, we have side-side-side theorem. If three sides match between two triangles, we can say that those triangles must be congruent. So even though there are six congruent parts, the three angles and the three corresponding sides, this um, by showing the side-side-side pattern, we can use the shortcut, and only by showing that those three sides are congruent, we basically can say that all the different parts of the triangle are congruent. So our triangle shortcut patterns are going to be side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Angle, angle, angle only guarantees that the two triangles are similar, which means that one could be like a scale, scaled down version of the other, but they have the same shape. And side, side, angle only works for right triangles, and we call it hypotenuse leg. Leg leg for right triangles is actually the same thing as side angle side, where the right triangle is the congruent angle between the two. So sometimes it helps to, like those triangles are kind of, one's kind of skewed compared to the other. Sometimes it helps to redraw the triangles in, so that they're in the same orientation so you can compare the different parts. So we use include instead of between. Um, like side AB is included between angle A and angle B. If we look at angle A, it's sort of like a hinge. Side A, side CA, and side AB are connected together by angle A. As we change angle A, we're changing the degree of slope of those two sides. Uh, we also have the side angle side theorem. If we can show that a side, an angle, and the other side are congruent between two triangles. That's enough to know that the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so now we're looking at, see if there's enough information. We've got an angle, vertical angle, pair of vertical angles at L, and that gives us side angle side pattern. So those two triangles are going to be congruent by side angle side. If we look at number two, we have a right triangle. So we're looking maybe at possibly hypotenuse leg, uh, but we have an angle there. So that angle and the right angle gives us two angles. But I'm not so sure that there's enough information about the sides to be able to say anything where those are offset from each other. They look like they're congruent but there's not enough information for us to actually know for sure. Looking at number three, they're not telling us that those lines are parallel. So what have we got? Uh, but assuming that they are parallel, we could use alternate interior angles and get RQS and TSQ congruent. QS is the sh side shared between those. And opposite sides of a parallelogram are going to be congruent. So we could assuming that that's a parallelogram, say that those two are congruent by side angle side. Really, since they're not telling us that it's a parallelogram, I don't know if we can actually get away with assuming that it is, but if it is a parallelogram, they're congruent by side angle side. Looking at the next one, uh, we got A whatever is congruent to itself by reflexive property. We have the two angles, and then those other two sides is marked as congruent. So that also gives us a side angle side pattern. And we need to make sure that we name the congruence in the correct order. A goes with C, B with D, and then C goes with A. Uh, looking at number five, uh, which pair cannot be proved congruent using side 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 or side angle side? Uh, we've got the two vertical angles, and we've got those two sides but there's no information about the other sides, so there's not enough information for that one. Looking at this isosceles triangle, we got the altitude, which is congruent to itself by reflexive. We got the two 
sides or the two legs of the isosceles triangle, and then those other sides are congruent. So we've got our choice of side, 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 or side, angle, side. And in the parallelogram, or they're showing us that we have opposite sides congruent. So that also gives us side, side, side. And then using the parallel lines with the alternate interior angles, we've got a couple of different choices for the angles. So we actually could use angle, side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, or angle, angle, side to prove that those are congruent. Okay, they want us to prove that QRT is congruent to SRT. So first off, we see that TR is congruent to itself. That gives us a side. Um, QRS is isosceles. That tells us that QR and RS are going to be congruent. That gives us another side. And then base angles are going to be congruent. That gives us Q congruent to S. So right now we have a side-side angle pattern. Um, but also RT bisects QS at point T, which sets up those two congruent sides. So now that opens up side angle side. So this is going to be a side angle side proof. So first off, one of the givens, QRS is isosceles. And uh, we'll put the other one in there. QR is congruent to SR. And RT bisects the base QS at point T. So from that, we're going to get that QT is congruent to TS by definition of bisector. Definition of segment bisector. Then TR is congruent to itself by reflexive property. And we still got to get those base angles in there, I think. Uh, or do we have side, side, side? Uh, that sets up side, side, side. If we use the base angles, that would be an extra step, but we could do that with side angle, 